This bow tuning tip is brought to you by Winchester Archery's Black Horse, Archer Extreme, Warrior Tough, Bow Grip Bow Vices, Get a Grip. Hey everybody, today we're going to be installing the new Rogue Sight from Archer Extreme. Um, we're going to be putting it on the Black Horse. Um, a few things that I wanted to talk about on the site before we get started with the installation is that it has a pretty, uh, several pretty cool features that a lot of sites um, just don't have, basically. Um, it comes with the red ring around the inside of the scope. That's to help you get your eye on it. Um, it also comes with three other rings that give you the option of having either a green, orange, or a blue ring. Um, you could do that for multiple reasons. If that just one of those colors happens to strike your fancy or... It goes along with the color scheme of your bow. In this case, the red is going to go along with the black and the red, so we're going to stick with that. Um, it also has a level at the bottom, which a lot of sights have. It also comes with a light to help light up your sights in low light situations. Um, it's a five pin sight. It's all adjustable. They're adjustable by uh, gears. It has a mechanical adjustment on the side. It's got thumb screws. When you're setting up your sights, so you can break it loose real easy, make the adjustments. You don't have to have an Allen wrench. Um, it'll it'll take you in uh, all the directions. Both your windage and your elevation are, uh, are adjustable that way. It also has a second and third axis adjustment, which a lot of sites don't have yet. And we'll talk about how to set that all up today. So we're going to install the sights on the bow, and the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and wax our threads of our screws like I told you guys to do when you set up the arrow rest in the first video. Um, and again we do this because we want the, the the screws to hold good but we also don't want them to corrode inside the aluminum because steel and aluminum have a, a chemical reaction together and they'll corrode and you'll never get them out and you end up rounding them out on the inside or breaking them off it's just a pain. So if you put wax on them now, it'll kind of eliminate that, especially with a new bow. All right, whenever you get ready to put these sights on, you have to kind of take into consideration what size peep sight you're going to be using when you get to that point. Um, I'm going to be using a fairly large peep sight. I use the 5 16 Hunter Peep. It's a G5 Meta Peep. I'm going to be putting the titanium one in. We're going to do that on another video. But um, the size of the peep sight in relationship to the size of the scope is kind of important. The way I like it is I like to be able to have my my peep sight ring to kind of just shadow the outside of my scope on my on my sight. And the reason I like that is because I can draw back, I can get my ring of my peep in the ring of the scope, lock down to my anchor point, and then each pin I'll pivot at the waist. That's the correct way to do it. You want to pivot at the waist in order to adjust your yardage or to, to adjust the pin according to the yardage okay so what I'm looking at and thinking this is kind of a bigger scope which is great because it lets in more light I'm gonna go with these outside holes now it, it's got two sets of holes it's got a set of holes here and a set of holes here well what that does respectively is it puts the sight either further out or further in on the mounting holes well the further in it is the bigger that scope is going to be in your peep sight so it may be outside of your peep sight so you can move it forward and make it a little smaller according to your peep sight in relationship to it okay so I'm gonna go with this outside hole to put my scope out far my uh, sight out farther go ahead and just always start these screws by hand a couple of get a couple of threads to bite before you start putting the Allen wrench on them so you don't cross thread I've seen that happen before I mean you can tap these things out but it also can weaken the riser and it'll weaken the hold that it has. Okay. Now you want to, when you snug them down, there's no real trick. Just tighten them down. I like to tighten them, bottom them both out before I tighten them both down. That way, the sight, you know, these holes are countersunk on the sight, number one. So it's automatically going to help it center up to the hole. So you go ahead and do it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and bottom it out to there. And now I'll bottom them both, so then I just put a little twist to them, put a little tension on it, so that it tightens down. All right. Now it's that simple to install the sights, but like I said before, with this sight, it has a second and third axis. So we're going to do that here in a few minutes. Okay. One of the things that I'm going to do in order to save time out on the range 
is I'm going to line my pins up with my arrow. It's basically like setting the center shot for your arrow rest. We're going to set the center shot for the sights. Okay, so the way I do that is I always like to use the uh, center shot tool in order to get that set. And I'll show you guys how to do that. In order to use the center shot gauge to set the sights left to right, all you need to do is take your center shot gauge and you want to find the flat spot on the back of your uh, riser and then you take the, the bead on the front and you simply slide it over to where it hits the center of the arrow shaft like so okay now you can take this center shot and you can break it loose and slide it a little farther forward because see the only thing that changes on this is the distance that it is out it doesn't change the distance left to right it's still the same as it was before so then you put it right back in the same spot that you had it in and you're gonna have to adjust your sights over and if you can tell these sights here need to go to the right alright so you just break your sight nut loose and you go ahead and start turning the little dial that's gonna uh, adjust it over the proper amount of clicks and it takes a few clicks to get over there because this is a really fine-tuned micro adjustable sight I mean um, when you're taking this thing over you're not moving it much guys I mean that's the nice thing about it it's got real smooth movement and it's got real real fine tune adjustment so as far as micro adjustments go this thing this rogue is awesome about that all right now that's got it pretty close nothing's dead on but you know it gets you a lot closer than it would than you would be out on the uh, range and it just saves a lot of time especially if it's summertime and it's really hot you know the, the making the most of your shots when it's like that in those conditions just makes it a little bit more enjoyable and you don't have to deal with any frustrations and now we're going to talk about the third axis leveling okay it, it takes a little bit more fine-tuning to get this right um, go ahead we don't need our arrow on there anymore we're going to take that off okay and what I do when I set this third axis so when I'm, I'm, I'm getting it set on the bench is I just grab my snap-on string level and it just snap it on right below your D loop like this okay now what I like to do is I like to go ahead and level my bow this direction which is going to be giving my string straight up and down okay now when you do the third axis which you're starting to talk when you're talking about third axis you're actually talking about the pins themselves level because think about it like this okay if your bow or if your sights are mounted to crooked okay now you may not be able to tell that and it on this site it's going to be tiny amount of adjustments but a lot of times those pins are very close together and it can be 20 yards so if you're just a little bit off your 20 yard pin may be drilling dead on the money but when you get to your 30 or your next yardage whatever it may be it's going to be drilling a little bit farther off to the right you're going to keep going, you're going to keep going, you're going to keep going. And by the time you get out to your last pin, I and mean, you may be missing the target completely. So what the, the axis uh, leveling does is it brings all those pins to where they're going to be perfectly level with the bow. It takes the bow and it levels it out. It kind of planes the entire bow. And there again, the rest is, is the start of it like we did on the first video. We started out by leveling the rest to the bow. Now we're going to take the, the bow and we're going to level sights to the bow. So... I'll show you guys this is pretty cool it's a pretty neat adjustment you can you, you end up using this level and the level that's on the site okay I'm gonna get this one set okay we got that one set now the cool thing about this string level is you're gonna look on the back there's another level that's gonna get your second your third axis level again you can tell the bubble it's over to the left so we do just break the little bolt loose on our boat on our uh, bow grip here we're going to turn it. We're going to put it like that. We're going to lock it down. Oh, man. <laughs> I got that one really quick. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, doing to get it. Just because things move when you tighten it up. But that's perfect. I mean, that really is absolutely perfect. Now, go ahead. I want you to look up at the sight. Have to step over to the side a little bit. See around the roller guard. Okay, now notice on the sight, the level. And zoom in on that now you can see that that bubble is just a tad bit on the inside 
Now that's not a whole lot. And honestly, I would feel my human error would be um, probably, you know, bigger than what that is. But I'll show you how you can move it. You just take your, uh, right here on the bottom of the site, there's, there's this uh, Allen wrench, a little Allen screw. You just break that one loose. And you break the top one loose. It doesn't take much. You don't want them to be really loose to where the sight's flopping everywhere. You want it to be where it has a little steady tension. Okay, I went the wrong way with it. Right there. Okay, so you see I loosen those two screws and then look. I can turn the I can turn the sight, okay? So now what I'm doing is is the sight the the sight pins would actually gradually be going at an angle like that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them back to where they need to be. They're right there in between the lines on even even on both sides and then hold the hold the sight and then just give one of the bolts a little turn in to tighten it. Okay, and then do the other one too real quick because don't go really super tight yet. You want to just do a little by little. Because if you go too much, you may move it. Double check, it stayed. All right, now that you got it snug, you can go ahead and put a little bit of heat on it. Because we don't want them to inadvertently move as we're trying to tighten this down. I don't think they would, but they can. You guys are probably thinking second and third axis adjustments. That's insane. I've never seen anything like it. Well, you know, it's, it's a relatively new concept. It's really come around from the 3D shooters because of the accuracy that they're trying to gain out of their equipment. And gaining the most accurate equipment, um, there's nothing wrong with that. I've always said my equipment is more accurate than I am. And when I say that, that means that this bow has the ability to shoot better than I can shoot it. And the reason is, is I have human error. Everybody does. You know, you you throw the shot, you know, you torque a little bit. You you just didn't have that, that smooth follow through. You maybe just a little twitch, you know, and that, that throws you off. So it has the ability, and I'm going to make it have the ability to shoot better than I can shoot it. You put it on a machine, a hooter shooter or what have you, and it would drive tacks and bust knocks. Well, that's how you properly install your bow sight. You know, if you guys are in the market for a great sight, and you're looking to add the second and third axis capabilities to your setup, the Rogue is a great site to take a look at, guys. Um, you know, like I said before, it comes with the extra rings, so you can color coordinate for you color coordinator guys out there. Um, and I don't blame you, because I like to do that myself. Um, it's a great solid site. It's got the, a light that comes with it. Most sites don't come with a light. You know that, you gotta buy that thing extra. Um, so that hassle's gone. It's got the second and third axis leveling, like we talked about before. That's a huge thing. It's got the micro adjustment sight or uh, pins, so you can really get down to fine tune it. I mean, overall, the thing's lightweight, it's tough as nails, and it's got a lot of great features. You can't go wrong, guys. Well, that's this week's video. On the next video, we're going to be installing the peep sight the string silencers, and we're going to be replacing the D-loop with a little more color fashionable D-loop than the black one that comes with the black horse. Until then, you guys be sure to stay tuned. I'll see you then.